This right here is the MPU 9250IMU controlled over ROS2 and RVIS visualization for Raspberry Pi. So you can see right here I'm rotating about the blue axis and it's responding pretty well in the RVIS simulation. Now if I try rotating about the red axis, you can see it's doing what I'm expecting. And then if I want to rotate about the green axis, you can see that now it's rotating about the green axis. So overall, it's responding pretty well as I expected. And you can see that I could just rotate it in any direction too, and it'll follow pretty nicely. Right now, the center location, it's fixed, but you could easily add the location tracking of the center of the object if you wanted to. Now what I have here is a plot juggler. I'm visualizing the X, Y, Z acceleration. So let's try to move this in the three different directions. So you can see when I move this all over the place, all three axes will respond as we expect. Now let's try only move it up and down and let's see which plot is moving the most. You see that when we move up and down, the green line on the bottom is moving the most as we expected since that's tracking the Z axis. Well, of course, it's hard to move very independently and only one axis by my hand, so you're gonna see noise in the other direction. Now, if I move side to side, let's see which one is gonna move the most here. And again, all of this, they use common filtering throughout this, so there's some sensor fusion. This specific IMU has three axes, the accelerometer for the XYZ, the gyroscope for the angular, and then also we have the magnetometer to do the correction of the drifting. But here you can see that you know as I move back and forth now, the red plot is moving the most. So you can see that we're able to track the acceleration in all three directions pretty independently. By the way, if you're new to the software side of robotics, make sure to check out my master AI and robotics bundle on my website where you get to learn ROS, OpenCV, computer vision using AI, Python, and C++. It's a great way to jumpstart your career in robotics software engineering. So go ahead and check it out on my website. It's going to be at kevinwoodrobotics.com. I'm going to leave a link in the video description, so go ahead and check it out. Now this right here is the angular velocity plot for the XYZ directions. You can see if I move all over the place, you can see all three are responding. Now, if, if we try to rotate about one axis, you can see that the dominant axis is showing in purple. Now, if I rotate in the other way, you can see a new dominant axis should be now showing. And then now if I rotate the other one, you can see that now the yellow is the dominant one. So you can see that all three axes is responding like expected, like the other one. So overall, you can see that this is pretty responsive. Again, all of this is communicated through I squared C for the Raspberry Pi. Specifically, this one I'm using the RDKX5, but the Raspberry Pi will work just as the same way. Now this third plot that I'm showing you right here is the orientation roll pitch yaw, which I showed previously in Arvis, but now these are the plots. Here you can see I'm rotating about the axis pointing up and you can see the bottom curve is responding. Now if I rotate about this axis, you can see now the yellow one is responding on the top. And now if I rotate this other one, you should see the top blue one is responding. So again, we see pretty well defined behavior for all three axes. And again, I can move all three in any way I want and it's plotting pretty well as I expect. By the way, if you're looking to integrate your IMU into a custom PCB board, make sure to check out PCBWay for your own custom PCB. You could just come here to PCB Instant Quotes. Go ahead and come in here, choose the different specifications you have, fill out the board type, the size, the quantity, and you have different options in terms of the color. Just go ahead and fill that out and then just come up here and click Calculate to get your quote. So you can see right here, this is the MPU 9250 chip that I'm holding. You can see the main pins that I'm using right here is the VCC ground SCL SDA. These two last pins are for the I squared C communication, which I'm using. So I have four jumper cables that I'm using and is connected to the RDK X5. This will work for the Raspberry Pi, but you can see I'm using these first three pins and then this white one here, this is my ground. You can see on the back here, these are the pins here. So I'm using one of them. This is gonna be, you can see on this side, this one I'm using the ground. And then there's three more pins here, the three volt 
and then we have the SDA and SCL. So those are the pins that I'm using. You might also have heard about this other chip that's very similar. This one is a MPU6050, but you can see right here that this looks very similar. There's a few less pins compared to the other one, but the main difference between these two is that the MPU9250 here on the left, this one has the magnetometer. So if you ever have any sort of drifting issue like I talked about in the beginning, and you want to use algorithms like sensor fusion or the MagWIC or other things, then you're gonna need to use this chip here. So if you want to have something that's cheaper and you don't care about the drifting, then the MPU6050 will work for you. So it just depends on your application and the sort of accuracy that you want. For me personally, I went with this one, the MPU9050 because, or 9250, because I want to future-proof my applications for a lot of the robotics projects I want to build out, like drones or balancing robots or like, you know, hand controlled for VR type applications for teleoperation. So this chip will be pretty good. You could look for other chips that have built-in sensor fusions, but there's a lot of libraries that you can use, like the code that I was using, which can do that for you. So this is a pretty good option. So let's take a quick look at the specs of this MPU9250 here. So the gyroscope features, you can see we have digital output, XYZ axis, angular rate sensors. So you can see that we have plus or minus 250, 500, 1000, and 2000 degrees per second. It has an integrated 16-bit ADC. We have a digital programmable uh, low pass filter here. And then we also have operating current of 3.2 milliamps. Sleep mode current is eight microamps. And then for the accelerometer, what we see here is we have digital output for the triple axis accelerometer. We have plus or minus 2, 4, 8, and 16 Gs with integrated 16-bit ADC. We have the accelerometer normal operating current at 450 microamps. And then the low power accelerometer mode is at 8.4. So you can see that it's pretty low power consumption, so you don't... Typically, this is, can be powered with like your Pi output like we did earlier. So what do we have here for the magnetometer? We have a three-axis Hall Effect magnetic sensor, a wide dynamic measurement range. We have an output data resolution of 14-bit, and we have a full-scale measurement range of plus or minus 4,800 micro Tesla. So we have a normal operating current of 280 microamps at 8 hertz repetition rate. So you can see here, there's a couple of other features here. We have the I square C up to 400 kilohertz fast mode and one megahertz if we're looking at spy communication. So there's a couple of different options depending on which route you want to go. And you can see here, if you go through the data sheet, there's some extra things you could read up on if you want to get into the specifics of like the temperature, the nonlinearity, there's all these specs for you depending on how precise you want to do your measurements. So for those that are very familiar with low level programming, I want to get down to the actual registers and bits. This is a table for you. So you can see we have all the register map. You could take a look at the different types here. The main ones that we use for our library is some of the stuff right here for the XL, X, Y, Z out. We also have the gyro. And if you go a little bit down, you see we have some extra information on some of the power, FIFO, and some of the different offset parameters. So go ahead and check it out. And if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.